Journey with the Jawes as we explore Africa in three months through eight countries. Join us as we willingly disrupt our sense of normality and challenge ourselves to live boundlessly by physically crossing borders, create deeper connections together as a family, and of course, explore the endless possibilities that exist beyond our various African borders. Hey there, <laughs> it's y'all's channel. We woke up on a bright sunny morning, a Thursday in Valfers Bay. We made sure to finish very early before check out because we had a five hour journey ahead of us heading towards the north, Etosha. Someone needed a pee break. The smallest human made us stop and watch the slowest train of our lives. This gave me some time to take the moment to think about where we had been and what we'd seen so far in Namibia. I truly enjoyed the Fish River Canyon site, actually witnessing a national monument in the land of the brave. Then of course, Valfus Bay, where we saw the pink salt lake and a large salt production plant. And now we head towards the north to Etosha, for a taste of the wildlife and nature before we head towards the central side of Namibia, Vintuk, the capital of this beautiful country. The conversation in the car was all about our experiences and thinking back and looking back, trying to jog Fezi's memory and finding out which was, you know, his favorite part of this journey so far. Fish River Canyon has to be number one for him just because he couldn't believe there was once water there. We drove through the small town called Karabib, which is halfway between Swakopmund and Vintuk. In South Africa, our land is demarcated in provinces, whereas here in Namibia, it's actually called regions. We are still in the Irongo region, which is where we also find Valfus Bay, as well as this really small town, Karabib, consisting of about 4,000 inhabitants and is well known for its marble quarries as well as a gold mine. We kept on passing road signage boards saying Omaruru, Omaruru, and I kept on asking myself, well, what does that mean? In Herero, it means bitter milk. So the cows in the area were producing bitter milk because they were eating from a bitter tasting bush. Fun fact. <laughs> We got to our campsite nice and early, so we didn't set up camp right away. This place looked exactly like it did on Booking.com. By the way, I do all my bookings on Booking.com for both local and international trips, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. No, it's not sponsored. We decided to explore a little bit of the bar and restaurant area. This place gets so busy at night, I did not see it coming. It was quiet during the day when we arrived. The staff are so sweet whatever you need in fact i even met the chef who when i was looking for garlic ended up giving me 500 grams of garlic butter so we were sorted we were literally gonna crush our garlic and mix it up with our butter but he was so kind the most of the staff are black and they speak oshovambo Oshivambo, do correct me if I am pronouncing that wrongly. They taught me a few words as well. There's a lot of singing and dancing and a night band. And I think that speaks a lot to the type of vibe in the north. There's different tribes here. And I really enjoyed just getting to know people who came in so open. We came back and needed to hang our damp laundry in Valfus Bay at our Airbnb. We got our laundry done there, but there was barely any sun, so it didn't get fully dried. And then we needed to attend to our little mister. I need you when your heart next to mine. Yeah, I'm all about keeping you and I. When you're here, you spark chemical reactions. Your aura strikes like lightning. Got no words, I'm 
Lovers drowning in attraction Only one way to describe it It's electric, can you feel it? You got the only touch that takes me high It's electric, I'm up in my face The one thing Fezzi has been asking for this whole trip is marshmallows on the fire <laughs> Now, I do not know how to braai marshmallows, to be quite honest. I don't even know how to braai anything. But I gave it a fair chance and, of course, it burnt right in my face. It was not edible at all. It caught fire and uh, I went about it all the wrong way. But my child was so happy. <music> This was the highlight of his Etosha trip. We made marshmallows on the fire for a good two or three nights and we bright this evening and just spent time as a family. Coming on to this camp, I knew the Vaslap had to go. There was no way I'd still be using Ivaslap in another country. So I want to actually show you these exfoliating cloths that I use. They are life changing. My guy friends have hopped on it. My husband uses this stuff. And while I was prepping to get ready, I thought, you know what? Let me plug all my honeys and their herbs on this exfoliating cloth. It is available at Discam for about $69.99. And it comes in three different colors, a lighter green as well as a darker green. So my husband's got the darker one and I use this one. Y'all, life changing. <laughs> Now, the thing about having to set up camp when you've got a roof tent is that you need to fold everything back to factory settings the way you found it if you're on the move. Now, granted, if you are on the campsite throughout the day and you are chilling, there's no need to fold your tent back down. However, we wanted to spend the morning on a safari trip, so we needed to close shop once again and be on the move. And this takes time. It is painful. I do not like it. My husband doesn't like it either. Especially because I don't help much during this process. Which I'm working on. Slowly but slowly, you know. This is where I had my first cultural experience. Of course, I asked for permission to shoot. And I also gave them a bit of money. So that I do not exploit our people. What are your names? Munene. Kunene? Munene. Munene and? Sonia. Sonia, lovely to meet you. 
<laughs> Lovely to meet you. Okay. This is Sonia and Munene, and they are of the Ova Himba tribe, a semi nomadic tribe of Namibia. I asked permission from Sonia and Munene to take a video, but you know what? All I kept on thinking about is how they've kept their traditions over the years. This is a tribe that's gone through genocide, modernization, and stayed true to who they are. They're still very much semi-nomadic and rely on the land for sustenance. In a world that is heavily, heavily, heavily modernized, yes, they use phones, and yes, they speak English. They still very much wear their traditional wear. They still paint their bodies with this red ochre body paint and wear this distinctive jewelry which they were also selling here on the road, having a conversation with them and hearing them speak their native language, Herero, just gave me a glimpse of what things looked like maybe 20, 30 years ago, even a century ago, back then in Namibia. And I love the fact that their hair spoke the loudest for me, <laughs> who absolutely loves hair. This was such an iconic moment to see people wear their hair proudly. Our crown speaks volumes. These girls wear their crowns proudly, but also live out their cultural beliefs as they know best, which for me was just a glimpse of what life should be. The other big thing that stuck out to me was just how generally and genuinely happy they seem to be. You know, we don't need a lot of money to be happy. We don't need a fancy life to be happy. We don't need to meet the world's standards to be happy. Just by simply being you and living life the way you believe to be true to both yourself and your core values, I think that's something so special to be said about them life is meant to be lived and i think that's one mistake we do we always postponing our happiness for some event yet happiness is here happiness is wherever you are and realizing whatever it is you have however little it is is enough for you now you know the word of god speaks about grace being sufficient for us for me this was a moment of looking at grace from the eyes of a himba tribe oh pure bliss Yay! this is amazing thank you so much back to reality now entering the itosha national park one ironic thing was the fact that nobody asked if we had meat we asked well what happens if there's meat in our car and we were told well you can enter with it but you will not be able to exit with it um ma'am How's this going to happen? So we had to U-turn and go back to our accommodation, leave our stuff in the freezer, which the staff were happy to do so. They kept it at the restaurant's freezer. We came back and could actually enjoy the safari without the risk of our meat being confiscated when we are leaving the park. <laughs> By the way, for the game drive, we paid about a hundred rand per adult and fifty rand for.
this is a designated pit stop. This is the only place we were allowed to have food, drinks, and also a toilet break. There is a public ablution block here, which I did not use because it looked a little bit <laughs> wild. <laughs> we continued our little safari drive before heading back to our campsite. After seeing all that meat walking around, we were very hungry. So we were happy to come back to the Itosha Lodge and actually enjoy a lovely buffet at this Itosha Lodge restaurant. <music> It is situated about three kilometers from our campsite. It is within the same property that we were staying at, just a different restaurant to the quirkier one that is a lot closer to our campsite. For supper, I had game, of course. After seeing all that game, I had some game meat, kudu to be specific. It was absolutely amazing and it was time to go back home and rest. Waking up the next morning, it was time to pack again and hit the road after four beautiful days in Itosha. One thing I will say was that this was just the long weekend that we needed from a Thursday right up to a Sunday. <laughs>
getting to Vintook, we had one thing and one thing only in our minds, and that was our laundry. I have been changing so many times in Itosha. We had more laundry than we'd imagined. We would have after four days. Thankfully, our accommodation had a washer and dryer. Again, I read my reviews to the T when I book on booking.com. I just make sure that it's got all that we need. And being in a city, we want all our needs met. So we will take full advantage of any resources available at the accommodation. Our host was so sweet. He even gave us soap for our laundry. We did have our own soap, but he was kind enough to say, you know what, just pop mine in. It's okay. After a very quick meal, myself and Fez headed to a little carnival. The Namibia showgrounds were on and I met up with a friend there. the next morning a little morbid because i wished we stayed a little bit longer in Vinthook. the vibe was good my son was super happy but we needed to cross the border so again it was a super early morning we packed our stuff very quickly and headed out i wanted to show you guys a little bit around the house but i didn't have the time so excuse the shaky footage only one man was happy here the other man who wanted to leave <laughs> As we head towards the east of Namibia, I am so grateful that we could explore not just the south, but also the west, the north, as well as now, driving through the east towards the next border. For us, the freedom that we are finding in travel is giving us a new perspective on what life means outside of the bustling city of the Johannesburg we call home. For my son, the biggest thing for him has been living without relying on technology and the television and not feeding off of what we hear on the news, but rather from what we see, what we touch, and of course, most importantly, what we feel inside of us when we're taking in the moments that are so important to us as a family. This trip reminded us about what connection means, connection to the earth, connection to nature connection as a family and connection to other human beings and even though there were some things we would not want to relive there are so many moments we would love to goodbye for now namibia we probably will be back <laughs> 
In the next video, we head to Botswana and cross the border with a lot of unknowns. In fact, nothing goes as planned. So many unknowns, but you know what? We said we're letting go and letting God. This is Africa. See you next time. We have had slight immigration issues.